Hockey fans, the Minnesota Hockey Connection is on the air. We're on the air for the next half hour. I'm Kenny Callagher along with Jerry Burrow. Now we're going to talk Minnesota hockey from the pros to the amateurs to the hockey to the mini mites and everything in between. And we had mini mites uh, this past week. This past weekend, Hockey Day Minnesota Duluth took place at Bayfront Festival Park. And there was hockey on every sheet of ice down there. Of course, the main rink, Jerry, and then that little pleasure rink. They had might games scheduled all day long. I thought that was kind of neat. Wow. Oh, I miss those games. Yeah. <laughs> kind of a neat touch. But Hockey Day Minnesota, huge success. And uh, Duluth was uh, a great venue for it this year, the 10th annual. And I'm sure that Duluth will be the uh, site for a Hockey Day Minnesota in the near future. So we'll pay close attention to that. But things started out real well. Uh, the morning low was 21 degrees when the procession started from the entrance of Bayfront, Mayor Emily Larson, Congressman Rick Nolan, uh, hockey players from uh, all the uh, other uh, area rinks. rinks, and they led a procession to the hockey rink, and then Denfeld and Eveleth came onto the ice and played that game, and Eveleth scored first. Right away, uh, two, Den- first two minutes. Yeah, but it's Denfeld like- hung on to win the game 5-2, to two. But then the temperature started to creep upwards. And by the time we got to the uh, featured game, if you will, East and Lakeville North, they had some problems with the ice. Yeah, the last half of the game, I can see it. I was standing right on the glass the whole two games, and uh, I can see the difference, what the ice was doing. And uh, kids that were shoveling their shovels, I guess they didn't know that they were going too deep in the slush and that and getting that down to the dirt. <laughs> okay. Well, and that's unfortunate because you get to, uh, it's by trial and error a lot of these things, and it's not like, okay, we know what we did wrong and we'll have to correct it next week or next month. It might be 10 years till Duluth gets this opportunity again. Uh, let's hope it's not that long. But a great event, a great weekend for hockey, Unfortunately, they had to cancel uh, the Pee Wee game. The Pee Wee game and the, the guns and ho- did the, the sled hockey. And, yeah, they got that going. The sled and hockey that. played right, and then the fire department and police they canceled. Right, and I was down there to watch it and get some photographs and video. I was upset, and I talked to uh, our uh, our good friend, uh, um, the fireman um, Gilbertson. Gilbertson, Gilby. Gilby, and he said, "Hey, I played on worse ice than this," and uh, I said, "Play boot hockey." So. They decided that uh, it just wasn't safe enough, and so they didn't play the game, and I was really upset about that. But uh, the temperature at 7 o'clock was like 37 degrees. Wow, that's still pretty warm. Yeah. Well, that sun came out at the East game, and I think that hurt the ice more, even though they say when the sun comes out it gets colder. But that bright sun, it puts damage to the ice, I think, more. East battled hard. Uh, Lakeville North uh, and East played in last year's Class AA championship, and it was a close game. Uh, East fell 3-2. to two. Right. That was a pretty even game, I thought. I thought so, too. Yeah, the goalies. I mean, it was just the type of game they couldn't. I'll tell you what, it's kind of funny, you know, when that ice started going downhill, getting soft like that, I don't think anyone could ice the puck by having the puck on the ice. I mean, it just couldn't make it to the whole length of the rink because it was so much slush in that. <laughs> I, uh, I had to go home and uh, basically thaw out and get something to eat and get some hot soup into me before I made it down to the second half of the, uh, of the day there. And I was able to see a little bit of the Fox Sports North broadcast. And I got to tell you, Jerry, they did a real good job. They did. I haven't watched yeah, any yet. They I did a real some. good job. Some of the... Uh, the, the the angles, the camera angles, uh, just constantly uh, stating that Duluth has one of the oldest outdoor hockey programs in North America. Right. And I think that the Wild and Fox Sports North were very pleased with what took place here. Right. And I tell you what, we have to give hats off and salute the organizing local organizing committee and all the, hun- the hundreds of volunteers that helped uh, put this event on. And another thing is, usually you got uh, over a year to plan this and do stuff. 
at the last second, I mean, not last second, but late, they were picked to do this. And so they only had about six months to get this together. No, it was July. I think, yeah, but I'm saying still, but they only yeah. had so much time to get everything right. together. Right. And that, right. so. Well, the Minnesota Wild Foundation uh, presented donations to Minnesota Hockey and the Duluth Amateur Hockey Association in the amounts of $52,500 to Minnesota Hockey. And a $10,000 check went to Daha on behalf of the Duluth Amateur Hockey Association, players, coaches, parents, and volunteers. We'd like to thank the Minnesota Wild Foundation for their generous gift, said Daha Executive Director Jason Watt. The funds will be used for various grassroots programs, including learn to skate, try hockey for free, and equipment assistance, just to name a few. And we are very humbled and grateful for the donation. $10,000, Jer. There you go. Beautiful. Here I was uh, looking through the program back in the old days. I was just wondering, how many rinks did we have back at our time? There was 37 rinks back then. Now, this is a, a list of all the rinks back in the day? Yeah. Is Jefferson on there? There it is. Jefferson, well, now apartments. It was Lower a pleasure. Chester, Grant, I did most of my time at Grant and a little bit at Lower Chester. Jefferson had a, a skating rink, and we played boot hockey there till it got dark. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I'll never forget it. There were some great times growing up. Of course, Lower Chester was my uh, home hockey rink. Yeah. But uh, what a great event. Hockey Day Minnesota has turned out to be a great event showcasing our state sport, uh, and I, I loved it. I couldn't get enough of it. Uh, there were some issues. Um, a lot of people uh, complained about the high ticket price. A lot of people complained about the fact that they couldn't bring their 10 and 8-year-old kids without paying the full price. Uh, they said kids 2 and under were free. I don't know. A lot of people complained that they bought a ticket and they didn't have a seat. So... Yeah, people are going to play no, no matter what. But when you buy a ticket to an event, you want to be able to, you know. And buying that ticket is nice to come to an event like that. But I think the main thing, too, is they they knew that this money is going to help uh, the outdoor rinks in Duluth. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, why complain? <laughs> well, and, and again, I just heard a few. And, yeah, uh, well, I, it's always going to be that. I, I understand. I, I, I get it to some degree. Um and again, it's not like we can, or the committee can look at this and say, okay, next week or next month or next year, we'll do it differently. It might be 10 years, like I said. So, uh, but a great event nonetheless, and it was a real special weekend. Yeah. And I think uh, it would be nice, and I don't think it can happen, but uh, like get sponsorship, if you know, a year and a half, and get about a half a million dollars where they can put a refrigeration rink in for that event. Permanently. Then, then give it to the city. Or to one of the rinks in the town. I got to tell you, Jer. That, I, that way, the the games can go on no matter what the weather is. I would like to see where Bayfront Festival Park is, where the Pleasure Rink is, if they could somehow fit a hockey rink down there. Right. And I don't know. I know there's a, a quite an effort, and the volunteer staff. My goodness, uh, Lon Hovland, uh, integral part in this. And I, I asked him, I said, can't we use this for the next few days? And, you know, maybe we can come down and play boot hockey. And there was liability issues. And they had to get the boards out of there. I don't know what the status is today. Here we're taping on Tuesday. I think they're out already. But those boards have to get back up to Piedmont. Right. So that's nice. They get the boards up there. Uh, Walt Bruley, the longtime <laughs> Zamboni driver at the uh, Duluth Arena, was down there riding the Zamboni that he started with back in 1976, I believe. Right. That Zamboni, <laughs> he says that it was blue when he had it. Yeah, and now it's painted <laughs> black. But, you know, we can talk about this for the entire show. We're going to get to some other He was games. having a good good time doing that. He loved it. He yeah. sure did. And, yeah. uh, hey, go to our Facebook page, uh, Minnesota Hockey Connection on Facebook. Uh, we've posted pictures and videos there from the event, uh, Hockey Day Minnesota. And then like us on Facebook while you're there as well. Yeah, and you did a good job of taking a lot of pictures and video. I mean, a lot of pictures. So go to the Facebook site, Minnesota Hockey Connection, and you'll see a lot of Kenny's pictures. He does a good job there. What uh, What did you take away from this uh, event, Jer? Uh, you saw a little different perspective I, than I did, I would imagine? I take it as that this is, a, I think, an experience of a lifetime to 
be there for these kids that played those games. They can take it the rest of their life, talk about I was at that, I was played in that game, you know. And um, I mean, over a million people probably watch it sometime during the day, some of that game, you know. Really? Somewhere, a million? Know. Well, they got it all over the world. They can get it. They can pick it up on the uh, Internet now. They can pick it up on streaming through your phones. You can pick it up everywhere now. So people all over the world were picking it up. Well, the number I heard, the attendance number, was right around 5,500 right. at Bayfront. Right. Uh, the uh, temporary aluminum bleachers uh, were on four sides of the rink, and they were jam-packed. Right. But, uh, you know, Fox is going to replay it. You know, at night they were replaying it, and so it was... It's been on all day, and then they repeated it at night. And so. I, I hope this spurs a, 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 a renewal in outdoor hockey in Duluth, not just for the youth, but, you know, you look at your list of hockey rinks that used to be in Duluth, and <laughs> I, I still go back to observation. But um, a, a great uh, vantage point for hockey in Duluth. Uh, you know, I don't know if they considered that site. I guess thinking about it logically, there's not a lot of room up there to try to fit five, six, seven thousand people up there. But my goodness, to have a hockey rink up at Observation again right. would be spectacular. Life's different right now, and the, back then you always had a lot of volunteers, and it's hard to get volunteers now, and that's the yeah. hard part. The volunteer staff that stepped up, right. uh, top notch, and hats off to them, like you said. Right. Uh, but uh, boy, oh boy. That would be nice, though, to get this outside hockey going again where we have more rink rats and learn the game, the skill, the little skills, the foundation of hockey, you know. And then heck with the systems the first 15, 12 years, you know. Well, there wasn't many people left at the end of the night. The beer tent was filled. Uh, they, they had the <laughs> wild St. Louis game on the big screen down there. And there they were, uh, Hanneman and Wes Walls in the uh, FSN uh, booth. And they were there till the end of the wild game. And I'd like to get their thoughts on it uh, maybe here soon. We can maybe talk to one right. of those two. It'd be nice to get Wes Walls on. Right. Get his thoughts. Yeah, he has to get in the high school playoffs next week. So, And he's coaching the... Eastridge. Okay. Yeah. All right. so well, let's yeah. talk high school hockey. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Duluth East was on a roll. I think they had seven wins in a roll uh, before that loss to uh, Lakeville North, actually eight. They were on an eight-game winning streak until they lost to uh, Lakeville North. Uh, they'll play Lakeville South tonight, the ninth. We're taping at Heritage, and then they'll play at Superior on Thursday, the 11th, and then they'll wrap up their regular season Saturday, the 13th, at Minnetonka. Right. Minnetonka's a very good team. They're a top-10 team in almost everyone's polls. And yeah, I've seen them as high as four. So that'll be a good game for them to start the playoffs. And seeding for Duluth East is uh, Wednesday night at Hinkley at 4.30. So the coaches will come down there and they'll seed the teams. And we'll find out who a week from uh, today who East will play. In the, it, it could be Duluth Marshall. Isn't that something? Wouldn't that be something if that was wow. a quarterfinal game? <laughs> and you know what? That would pack that place in. <laughs> I think Duluth East wants to play that game after getting humiliated four to nothing. That well, I don't know on. if they want to play a tough game like that. That first game, they I think they would some. accept that challenge. Okay, I oh. think they would, especially <laughs> now at this stage of the season. Duluth then felt uh, again won that game against Eveleth. They'll play again tonight. They play Marshall at Heritage tonight, we're taping. Right. And then Friday they'll wrap up the regular season against Grand Rapids right. at Heritage. Right. Wow. So How do they get that two game? Two big games. They've always cuz uh they've always played them. All right. So, all right. And then uh Duluth Marshall, uh Duluth Marshall uh, uh lost uh, this past Saturday to uh, St. Cloud Cathedral up at Mars 6 to 4. And they'll uh, play their final game uh, tonight against Enfield. Is the final that's their last game? Wow! Yeah. So they got a week to to wait for the playoffs. Then. Unless this schedule changed on me without knowing. Yep. Okay. Well, did you hear um, the Minnesota Minutemen name their finalist for Mr. Hockey for 2016, the best high school hockey player in the Frank Brinzik Award? They got ten players for the Mr. Hockey, and they got two goalies that are up for the Frank Brinzik. Nick Award for the best goalie in the state, senior goalie. These are all seniors. Now, so, last week we had River Alander on the program. Right, and he's one of the goalies nominated. Awesome. 
Good. Yeah. Good. And I'll tell you what, the way he played in the Elite League got him to the final finalists because I watched him. He might have a hard time now because a lot of people don't actually come up to Duluth and watch him that much. And if you watch, you know, he, I mean, Denfield lost a lot of key players from the year before. Nick Thompson, that used to help him out on defense, you know. Now there's so many two-on-ones and three-on-twos that uh, he has to make a lot of tougher saves than most of these kids out there. And so having a, I think the last time I looked, he was a point nine one four save percentage. And that's amazing for what he has to go through. So well, congratulations to uh, to um, River, because that's a yeah. great honor. Yeah. And the other goalie is, uh, let's see, who's the other goalie? Do, 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 do. Oh, Nick uh, Althas. He's a St. Cloud of Apollo. These are both Class A goalies. So that's different, too. That's oh. the first time I think that ever happened. Really? Yeah. So those are the only two goalies they only, running? They only named two now. They used to and do they're it both different. Class A. Right. Same cl- Has that happened before? I, that's what I'm saying. I don't think it ever happened before. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. Okay, and then the top uh, 10 for Mr. Hockey, we got a little mixture here. We got uh, in the, the Class A players are Riley Tufty, who will be the big favorite by far. Then he's so that's the by, UMD recruit. Yes. Yeah. Then we got uh, some other players, Michael Graham from Eden Prairie. He's going to Notre Dame. We got a uh, uh, Mitchell Matson from Grand Rapids, and Rapids now is playing very good hockey. They're in the top ten right now. And we got uh, Riley Tufty's uh, line mate, Luke Noderman. He's from Blaine. We got uh, Holy Family Catholic Will Guerin. Yeah, Holy Family Catholic has uh, been 3-4 the last uh, month in that, so very good team, and he's the leader on that forward. Um, Benel, who hasn't lost a game, just one tie all year, got forward Cade uh, Glico. And let's see, who else do we have? Okay, we got a couple other class double A's. We got Casey Stom. He's from Hill Murray, defenseman. He was out... Um, half the season from an injury, so he's back playing. And then Tyler Jetty Farmington, another defenseman. And then the Class A players, we got Chase Ellingson from uh, Breck, who will give Hermantown probably their biggest competition in the, if they both make it to the state tournament. And then, uh, hey, got another local boy, Hermantown's defenseman, Riot Amok. Mm. So congratulations to him, too. And to all the players, that's an honor just to be mentioned in this yeah. list. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So we'll know who Mr. Hockey is uh, Sunday after the state tournament uh, finals on Saturday night. So it'll be Sunday afternoon. We'll know that. So that should be about the 6th of March. Well, this is the final week and weekend for the regular season of uh, boys high school hockey. And uh, Jerry compiles his uh, rankings of both Class A and AA weekly. And you can find those at minnesotahockeyconnection.com. And they're also posted to our Facebook page. And Jerry, this week? Okay, in Class AA, Benel still number one. They haven't lost a game. One tie with uh, Lakeville North. They're undefeated. North. Yeah, Lakeville North is the only tie, only blemish. Ooh. Number two, Blaine. Blaine's a heck of a team with Tufty on it. When he Tufty goes good, Blaine goes good. Yeah. <laughs> then Holy Family Catholic, number three. Lakeville North, who just beat in the outside game, Duluth East, number four. I like them a lot better than a lot of other people do because of their forwards, their coaching. They've been there before. Yeah. So that's why I have them maybe a little higher than some people. Bermidji, very uh, disciplined team. And a lot of... Uh, just nice players. I mean, they're not great players, but they they mesh together. Chemistry is good in that. Number five, Stillwater had six kids on the Elite League. The only thing I don't like about Stillwater is their schedule. They had a, Their conference is probably the, one of the weakest it's been in years. And then number seven, Eden Prairie. They've been having little goalie problems recently and losing a lot of close games. Minnetonka, number eight. St. Thomas Academy has been playing a lot better hockey, number nine. 
And Rapids playing great hockey lately, and they're number 10. And teams to watch, Centennial, Duluth East, Edina, Elk River, Farmington, Hill Murray, Lakeville South, who East plays tonight, Moorhead, Prior Lake, and Wazetta. And over in Class A, we got Hermantown, number one, and Breck, number two. Now, Hermantown, uh, have they still been playing up to yeah, the level? They, they have. Yeah. They have. So they're they're doing real good. And I think... Uh, now, did they just have a close game with Brainerd? Yes, they did. Two to one. Yeah. Brainerd's been playing a lot better than a lot of people thought this year. But, you know, you can't be great every game. And yeah. So, and they go on the, you go on the road, and, All right. and who knows? Yeah. And then you don't know who, maybe they had a couple kids sick and that, you know, cold season and that. Number two, Breck. Number three, St. Cloud Apollo. I like these three teams. St. Cloud Apollo has the defense. Breck has a lot of offense. And Hermantown's just a deep team, one of the deeper teams in the Class A. Number four, Montamita. Number five, who's having a great season, Hibbing. And they'll be down playing uh, Hermantown on, is it Thursday or Friday night? Wow. Yeah, they're down here, and that place okay. is going to be packed yeah. for that game. Yeah, yeah, the Blue Jackets, they're definitely bringing it this year. And i got to tell you. I think it's Thursday night. The fact that Hibbing, Greenway, and East, only one of those three teams make it down to state. Um, so, in, in um, Class A, it'll be Hermantown, or I'm, I'm Hibbing, sorry. and Greenway. Yeah, yeah, Hermantown. And then Den, I mean. Denfield, I mean, you have the, yeah. with uh, Elander as a yeah. goalie, he can... Uh, he can pull an upset sure, against any of these sure. teams. Wow. Because wow. he had, uh, even Hermantown, he had, um, they're close to Hermantown for two periods, and then third period, Hermantown took a bang. I mean. Who do you like out of the two teams on the range, Hibbing and Greenway? I like Hibbing because of uh, yeah. Perinovich and um, the goalie, the freshman goalie. He's only a freshman, but really? he's been, playing, okay. he's been right. playing good. All right. Omen. So we got Hibbing fifth. Yes, and then St. Paul Academy 6, St. Cloud Cathedral, who just beat Duluth Marshall, number 7, Delano 8, Thief River Falls 9, and then Greenway is number 10. And teams to watch, Blake, East Grand Forks, Little Falls, Laverne, Princeton, Sartell, St. Stephen, Northfield, and Orono. Go to the Minnesota Hockey Hub and check out the statistics. I think Laverne has the, the leading goal scorer and points getter right. in the state. Right. And the thing is, though, they play a te lot of teams that they're going to beat 12-1, 13-0, stuff like that. And but we never gonna... heard of a player or even the team of Laverne <laughs> yeah. until about two years ago. A little more than that, yeah. When they got these uh, you yeah. know, up-and-coming players. and uh, Right. That's interesting. Um, Thief River Falls, I'm, I'm sorry, East Grand Forks. They've been struggling a lot of games this All year. All right, so okay. We'll see. Yeah. But they got, Thief, it'll be East Grand Forks and Thief River Falls probably most likely for right. the fi section final game, I see. Yeah. So there you go. So one more week, and um, this is the last week of the regular season in hockey. Playing games start on Saturday night for some sections. And then, like, Section 7 AA, I know, starts their playoffs on um, Tuesday next week. So. Well, we're certainly going to uh, keep you uh, cover abreast, rather, of all the action in high school hockey. Um, and, again, uh, we opened up the uh, segment with uh, Hockey Day Minnesota. And there was, uh, you know, we talked about the matchups and whether or not uh, Eveleth was a good team to schedule into this again I, I i don't want to make anything out of this other than they were in the very first or second uh hockey day minnesota Evelyn. they went up to Badet bay and played i believe right and then they get scheduled into this game there was some controversy jerry with Evelyn. i don't know if you want to talk about it or elaborate a little bit I think they wanted. I think they wanted it pretty bad that now, they wanted this hockey day Minnesota this year. This w w were they told that they were going to get it? This I year? have no idea. I'm okay. I have no. Did they put of that. a bid in, or was there something? Uh, right. But no, they stayed away from some dinner. Was that uh, a part of this? I 
I just heard that uh, there was a dinner that was going to be paid by some sponsor and they declined to, to go to that. So I guess they had other plans or something. I don't know. Okay. And, well, I, I don't... And because of that, Dental here, didn't want to be by themselves. Here's so. my thought. Eveleth played in this game already back in 2007 or eight. They played this year. There's a very good chance, and it's most likely that Eveleth will host this event. Why couldn't they have scheduled a game with Denfeld with a team like Proctor? Proctor's not going to host this event. Right. North Shore is not going to host this event, Hockey Day Minnesota. So that's my angle on that. Yeah, that's, that makes sense. Yeah. And, you know, another thing they, they're probably looking for are a little history in these games, you know. The Eveleth has a history, the Hall of Fame, and look at the old, I mean, back I, in the 40s I understand, 40s but and they've 50s, been so. in the game. This is their second time. Right. More than likely they're going to host this, meaning they're going to play yeah. in three hockey days. I see your way. And Proctor, when will they get into this? When right. will North Shore get into this? When will Moose Lake get into this? You know, regional teams, area right. teams. Right. So. How about the Iron Range? How about Hibbing? Grand, well, Grand Rapids hosted it, but you got to think Hibbing... Uh, or Greenway would be in the mix here somewhere. And yeah. What about I, next year? Have they talked about next year? I, well, there's a lot of people from Stillwater, so I'm thinking Stillwater oh, okay. has the lead All on right. this. All right. I'll tell you what, if Stillwater doesn't get this next year, they'll get it the year after. Yeah. I'm almost sure of that. Okay. Kind of way, because I saw those. They had a whole bunch up there from Stillwater. Well, hockey. <laughs> and I day, talked to them a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> Hockey Day Minnesota is uh, alive and well in this state. And it's not going to be diminished or fade away anytime soon. And Duluth uh, put on a very good event. Uh, and the weather was perfect. If you would have held the uh, hockey day in, in Duluth the previous weekend, it, we couldn't have played it. The temperatures were too warm and it was raining. Saturday was the perfect day. Sunday, it was above freezing all day long. And we had some uh, light precipitation in the form of drizzle. Well, for the fans, you couldn't have a better day. It was perfect. It really yeah. was. Well, we're down to our final couple of minutes. The Minnesota Wild continue to struggle. Uh, they've got to find their way. Uh, the UMD continues to struggle. UMD, 40, but they won. But they won a couple of games. They got to give them credit. UMD, forty fourth in the nation in the power play, fourteen <laughs> percent. Saint Scholastica, number two in the nation in the power play, twenty nine percent. UMD penalty kill, twenty first in the nation, eighty four percent. College of Saint Scholastica, fourth. In the nation in Division Three at ninety-one percent. What are you saying? I'm saying Mark that should coach the power. I mean, the power I'm plan saying that kill? UMD should look at film of Saint Scholastica and say, "Oh, that's how you get it done." Okay, uh, Saint Scholastica doing a wonderful job. Fifteenth in the nation, they will take on number one Saint Norbert. Oh yeah, this weekend up at Mars Lakeview, Friday seven o'clock, Saturday four o'clock. And a great matchup at Mars this weekend. Uh, UMD, fourth place, big win, uh, sweep over Colorado College. They play at North Dakota this weekend, Jer. Wow. Ow. Big, big games. So I guess we're done with that. Well, uh, okay. Minnesota uh, Hockey Connection. You can find us online, minnesotahockeyconnection.com, and go to our Facebook page. And like us on Facebook as well. And, uh, Jared, we'll be back here next week to drop the puck. Yeah, and hopefully the Wild can get something started. (laughs) Well, they need to get something started. And it will start uh, with uh, getting some goals and some good goaltending, which has been lacking. Yes. All right, we'll be back here next week. We'll see you then. 